Father in heaven, forgive us our debts and 
our sins we have committed against our friends, our family, to you and even to ourselves. May you quench our hatred, our worldly desires, especially hatred against ourselves, you and other people. May you bless us in our path, our pilgrimage to better ourselves as Christians, even as human beings or as fellow neighbors or family members. May you guide us and bless us, our families, our residences and our lives as we walk in your path. And may we never forget that you are always there for us, even in the hardest times, especially in the hardest times, even when things all seems wrong and the world just seems like it's pummeling us to the ground. May you always be the beacon of hope in our lives and be our the assurance that we need to keep moving forward in our life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The word of God given to us today is Acts 11, verse 25 to 26. Acts 11, verse 25 to 26. Let's open up our Bible and read the scripture together. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. When he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Amen. The word of God given to us today is entitled, Let's Talk About Living Out Faith. Let's Talk About Living Out Faith. In this world, there are so many different kinds of church. We have one faith in Christ, but the way we express our faith is so different. And I have been part of many different churches, and I also had different occasions to visit churches. And I remember so many different churches that were unique on their own. But today I would like to share two churches that were very unique that I could recall. One is a church in Korea, and it's called Samil Church. And here's the picture. And just like our church, they don't have their own church building 20 years ago, when I first went to Korea for university, I started attending this church, and they didn't have a church building. They rented a gym, a university gym, and every Sunday morning, they had to put the chairs. An interesting thing is, the church members were mostly young adults. It was a very young church. Young adults from, came from all over, and there were 10,000 young adults every Sunday worshiping God. And I was so impressed. Wow, a church without building, just like TMC. And a church that's very young with all the young adults gathering to worship God and dedicate themselves to God. Another church that was very unique was a church I visited in Cameron, and it was called the People's Light Church. People's Light Church. And it's a church I visited for my thesis, for my doctoral thesis, because I had to have a survey. And this church was located at a garage. So you go down this house, and there was a big garage, and you had to open the door up upwards. And there were plastic chairs that you had to set. And the service started at 9 a.m. So I sat to worship together, because after the service, I was able to have my survey, because I talked to the head pastor beforehand, and he allowed me to have the survey after the Sunday worship service. So at 9 a.m., we started worshiping together, praising God, clapping our hands. And this worship praise went for an hour. And people started sweating. And then the pastor came up to read the scripture and start preaching. And that preaching went for an hour. I was like, whoa, this is quite long. Because usually, right, in the Western church, we worship for an hour. But then worshiping an hour, sermon for an hour, it was already two hours. I'm like, whoa, this is quite long. When is ending? And then the sermon ended. And I'm like, oh, is it the end? But then the worship leader came back up and he started leading worship again. The first song, okay. One song and then are we over? Two songs, three songs. And then they started worshiping for 45 minutes again. I was like, whoa, okay. 
And at the end of the worship, I'm like, okay, is it the end now? Because we had a worship for an hour, a sermon for an hour. Now another worship for 45 minutes. Is it over? But then another pastor came up. And this time, it was a female pastor, and she started reading another scripture, and she started giving another sermon again. And that's how the sermon went on for three hours and a half. Can you show us the picture again? And in this picture, you can see this board that shows the worship time, and it says dimanche. In French, dimanche is Sunday. And what hour is it? It's from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. So every Sunday for three hours and a half, it was a regular Sunday service that they worshiped for three hours and a half. And I was like, wow, this is quite unique. Today, I would like to share about another church, a church that is written in the Bible, and it's named the Church of Antioch. This church was the first church that was founded outside of Israel, and it was mostly of foreigners, non-Israelites. As Jesus ascended back to the heavens, the disciples remained in Israel. And they started preaching the gospel. And people started converting to Christianity. They started believing in Jesus. And in this one day, there were 3,000 believers that started believing in Jesus. And the numbers of believers in Israel and Jerusalem started growing, growing, and growing. And then the persecution towards the believers in Jerusalem started becoming more pressured and more pressured to the point that they needed to start running away because they started killing believers in Jerusalem. So that's when believers spread out. They ran away and they went to other cities and even to the extent of Samaria, Judea, and even farther to Antioch. And that's when a church was built in Antioch. But it was a church of mostly foreigners, the first church of foreigners. And the news about this started being spread to the church leaders in Jerusalem. Let us read today's passage, verse 22 and 23, 22 and 23. News of this reached the ears of the church at Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. Amen. News of this reached Jerusalem. And the church leaders in Jerusalem were curious. Okay, what's going on in Antioch, in that far land, far foreign city? Because that city was one of the very important cities in the Roman Empire. And in that big city, what, there are Christians Foreigners starting to believe in Jesus? Okay, let's send our, one of our church leaders, Barnabas, so they could go and see. And Barnabas went and saw what was going on. And he saw how there was the grace of God. Grace of God among the foreigners. Foreigners started coming to believe in Jesus. And they started converting to Christianity. And he was touched. He was like, we can't let them like this. We need to nurture them. We need to strengthen them. So he went to scout another pastor so that he could come and minister together. Let us read verse 25 and 26. 25 and 26. Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. So who did Barnabas go scout for? He went and he brought Saul. What did he and Saul do? They met with the church and they started teaching them, nurturing them. For how long? For a whole year. And what started happening? People started calling the church members of Antioch Christians. It wasn't they themselves who were calling themselves and referring themselves as Christians. It was the non-believers outside of church who were seeing the believers at this church of Antioch and saying, hey, they are different. They are distinguished. They are Christians. 
How about you and I? Do we call ourselves Christians, or is it others that refers to us as Christians because we're quite different? Well, the believers in Antioch, they were the first ones to be called Christians because they were so different. They were living out their faith, and how they lived out their faith was different. Even to the eyes of the non-believers, it was different. And they said, "Hey, these people are different." They really follow what they say. The Christ that they're trying to spread, they're really living according to that Christ. They are Christians. The believers in Antioch lived out their faith. Then how? How did the believers in Antioch live out their faith? Number one, they tried to gather. And they tried to dedicate themselves to learn more about God and to know more about God. The believers in Antioch gathered and really dedicated themselves to learn and know more about God. This is what it says in verse 26. Let us read together. And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church. And taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. When Barnabas and Saul came, these new pastors at this church of Antioch, what did they do? They met with the church. They started meeting with the church. Let's say new pastors came, and they're like, "Hey, let's meet up. Do you think it it would be easy for the church to just start meeting up?" Probably not, because they're they're quite new. They don't have that kind of relationship. But then, how were they able to meet up? Because that was the way it used to be. Even before Barnabas and Saul arrived, the believers in Antioch they liked meeting each other. They liked fellowship among the believers. After work, after school, after studies, after exam, they gathered together to have fellowship together. What did they do when they gathered together? It says they met with the church and taught great numbers of people. Let's say I open up a discipleship training, I open up a Bible study program, but then no one comes. Right? It wouldn't work. But then, how was Barnabas and Saul able to teach? Great number of people, because this great number of people that used to gather really had that heart of wanting to learn more about God and know more about God, and that's why it was possible. They opened discipleship courses and nurturing program, and the people were coming and joining together because they wanted to know more about God, and the non-believers were curious. Hey, what do you do after work? Well, I go to church. What church for what? Aren't you tired? Yeah, because I want to know more about God, and there's a Bible study. Hey, what about you? What do you do? You weren't even able to sleep because we had exams, and there's loads to do, lots of homeworks to do. What are you doing after school? Well, I'm going to church. Why? Because I want to know more about God, and we have this nurturing program. When the non-believers saw how the Christians In Antioch, were living, they couldn't understand. For sure, they would have been tired after their work, after their school. But they went again for another gathering, for another meeting. And what was that meeting for? To know more about God. And they thought, "Hey, these people really mean what they say. They really believe in this Christ. They really want to know about this Christ." That's when they started calling them, "Hey." They are Christians. They are people who follow Christ. So one of the traits that really distinguished them, and how they lived out their faith was, they really gathered, met together, wanting to learn and know more about God. Number two, and how they lived out their faith, they spread the word of God. They spread the word of God. This is what it says in verse twenty-two. Let us read it again. News of this. Reached the ears of the church at Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. 
Amen. News of this reached the people in Jerusalem, the church leaders in Jerusalem. How were the news of this foreign city in Antioch be heard in this far land city in Jerusalem? There would have been something that was spread so that these people were able to hear. What if the believers in Antioch, they believed in Jesus, but no one talked about it? How would they know who believed? How would they know the foreigners started believing in Jesus? Probably not many people. But then they started talking about it. What about Common Lake around our neighborhood? Do you think people know how many number of us are gathering? Probably they would have no clue. Why? Because we believe, but we don't spread it. We don't go out, we don't meet them, we don't talk to them about it. But let's say we start going out, reaching out to them, and you start telling them about the gospel. Hey, sir, could I have a moment with you? I want to share about this Jesus I got to meet. And he's really precious. He's the Christ. He's the Messiah. He came to deliver you from your sin. Okay, well, thank you, man. Thank you. Where, where are you from? I'm from Disciple Methodist Church. And then the next day, Another person reaches out to that person. Hey, sir, could I have a couple moments with you? I want to share about Jesus. Okay, okay. Where are you from? Oh, I'm from Disciple Methodist Church. Oh, okay. There was another person yesterday who talked to, who shared about Jesus to me, and he was from Disciple Methodist Church. And the next day, another person reaching out. Hey, sir, could I have a, are you from Disciple Methodist Church? Right? The people around our neighbor will start knowing, oh, there's a church there. There are quite some people gathering there. And that was the very thing that was happening in the church in Antioch. People started sharing on how the believers of this church started spreading the gospel about Jesus. Are you from the church of Antioch? Oh, you too. That's why you're sharing. And this started being spread. The non-believers started talking about it. Hey, those believers in that church of Antioch, they really like to talk about Jesus. And this is how the news spread to the city of Jerusalem. The believers in Antioch, they spread the gospel. They like to share about Jesus and what Jesus had done in their life. They weren't silent. And that's why people in that city were able to see and how the non-believers were being converted to Christianity. The foreigners were being converted to Christianity. And it was one of the first churches that was being strengthened and growing of the non-believers and the non-Jews. And they were surprised. And this news was being sent to church leaders in Jerusalem. Number two traits they had. They spread the gospel. The number three traits. Number three is although... They were a very young church. They sacrificed themselves to send missionaries so that they could further spread the gospel to lands that are more foreign. This is what it says in Acts 13, verse 2 to 3. Let us read it together. Acts 13, verse 2 to 3. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. Amen. The church of Antioch was gathering. They were praying to God and praising to God. And the Holy Spirit talked to them, Hey, send missionaries. You're a young church. You're a new church. But you got to believe in Jesus because someone came and talked to you about me. Go out. Not only to the city, but to foreign countries. Send missionaries so that they could spread the gospel about me. Okay, Jesus, who should we send? Send Barnabas and Saul. Who was Barnabas and Saul? They were the church leaders. They were the ones who were nurturing the large crowd. They were the ones who were settling and strengthening the church. But then the Holy Spirit was telling them, send them 
to church leaders, as missionaries to foreign lands. Let's say the Holy Spirit is talking to us or our youth community while we're worshiping and the Holy Spirit tells us, hey, send the President Lin as missionary. Maybe we say, oh man, Lin, she's the president. Then who's going to be in charge of Stucco, right? Or send Pastor John. Send the teachers out. Then we're going to be doing, or we're going to be thinking, okay, who's going to, who's going to preach the sermon next week? Who's going to lead the worship? Who's going to lead our small groups? Who's going to take care of us, right? And that's the very thing that the Holy Spirit asked the believers in Antioch. They were a new church. It wasn't like a, old, big, strengthened, growing church, a new church that was growing. But they were willing to make that sacrifice. Okay, God, we really like spreading the word about you, and that's what we have been doing in the city. But you're telling us to go even further and send missionaries? We will. You're telling us to send our church leaders? We will. Because that is why we're living for. And the non-believers outside of church saw this, saw how the believers were sacrificing. They were willing to send their church leaders, although they weren't settled yet. And they're like, man, these people are really different. They really mean what they say. They are Christians. The believers in Antioch were referred and called to Christians, not because they called themselves Christians, but because the people out of church saw them and started calling them Christians because they saw how they gathered and wanted to know more about God, how they always shared about Jesus, and how they were even willing to sacrifice themselves to send their church leaders as missionaries. Are you and I, are we the ones calling ourselves Christians? But when someone else looks at us, they don't see Christ in us, and they're like, what, what are you talking about? Or is it the people outside of church looking at our lives and they're like, oh, they are different. They are different. They really want to know more about God. They really always talk about Jesus. They're really willing to sacrifice even themselves for the gospel. Let us live out our faith. We receive salvation as a gift from God. But then faith makes us Leave out our faith. Faith grows when we leave it out. Let us thirst to know more about God. Let us take the courage to share about Jesus. And let us be willing to sacrifice ourselves so that the gospel may be further spread. Let us pray. Let us pray with the following prayer request. Let us gather to know you more, share more about you, and have a heart to give ourselves, although when we are not fully ready. May our lives of faith be shown to others, so that we are called as Christians by people around us. Let us have a moment of prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, here we come to pray. Lord, we pray that we would have the courage to leave out our faith, that this faith will not only remain in our heads, in our brains, in our knowledge, so that it doesn't only remain in our hearts. We want to live it out. We want to live it out. We want you to be shown in our daily lives. We want you to be revealed through us so that the people around us, seeing us, our lives, the way we live, we see you. And so that they may confess, you guys are Christians. You guys have a different life. You guys really mean what you confess. Heavenly Father, we pray. We pray that we may live out our faith. Let us not be infants in Christ, not being any distinguished from the world, but let us grow in faith by living it out and being different and distinguished from the people of the world. Let us not refer to ourselves as Christians, but let us be referred as Christians from others. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Here's the announcement for this week. Prayer for me will be grade 10. Small group activity for parents Sunday. Let us write a poem to our parents to express how thankful we are for what they have done for us. Special activity. Starting from May, we will have a monthly special activity prepared by Stucco. Every third Sunday, grade 7 to 9 will have this special activity, and the remaining grades will go for small groups. And every fourth Sunday, grade 10 to 12 will have this special activity, and grade 7 to 9 will go out for small groups. Jeja Olympics coming up for May 29th, 2 p.m. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed, wonderful day.